Hey, look, it's a figure that's not a repaint for once. It occurred to me as I was making a lot of these catch-up videos that a lot of what I've been looking at are just repaints of figures I've previously covered on the channel, and uh, that's mostly coincidence, but I thought maybe I should mix it up a little bit, so let me take a look at this thing, uh, Dragon Force Racing Flame. I have not covered this guy for a couple of reasons. I've actually had him for probably like a year and a half, two years now. Maybe it's, I think I got him last year. I don't remember. My, my handy dandy spreadsheet doesn't have years on it, so I don't really know. But this guy is cool. I got him for basically two reasons, which will both become more apparent and I'll more fully explain when we get to the alternate mode. Because yes, we are starting in robot mode this time because as is usually the case with the videos where I start in robot mode, it's because I feel like the alternate mode is kind of worth being a bit of a surprise. But this is actually a pretty cool looking figure. Uh, I don't know anything about Dragon Force. I think it's either a Korean or Chinese uh, adventure type robot show thing. I, I don't know. But this looks pretty cool. I really like the colors here. You've got this almost metallic pearlescent white for a lot of bits. And a similarly toned gray for the pieces that aren't that pearlescent color. And then these really nice, kind of a halfway between orange and yellow accent color with the translucent red or translucent reds. And some dark grays in a few places. It's a really nice color scheme. And the sculpt on this guy is really cool too. Like the proportions are cool. I like a lot of the different bits of detailing and how it's all mixed up. Like how you've got these, I just like these really big translucent red detail bits. But what's cool about these is that they're details. They're not joints. Like entire pieces aren't really made out of this stuff. It's more, you've got like, uh, like looking at this hip skirt thing here. You can see that that is actually, zoom in here, this is actually a translucent red piece sitting inside this yellowy orange piece. So that's not in danger of breaking because it's not, like it's, it's not, this whole hip skirt is not translucent plastic. It's just the, uh, the piece there. So like, I really like that this translucent red isn't really a danger <laughs> in most regards like even the uh even the front and back skirts you can see there's a really big translucent red piece here but it's tucked inside of this white piece so it's uh it's a bit more secure but yeah the uh i love the deco and design of this guy it's got kind of a kind of an intense knight vibe <laughs> like uh if a medieval knight was a bit hardcore, more hardcore, I guess. It's also a very clean robot mode. You don't really get... I mean, technically you have alt mode kibble on this guy, but you're not going to know what it is unless you know what you're looking for. And it just it looks really cool. It's a very clean robot. Looks neat. He's got these uh, little flip-out blades, which is more of a... It's more of a gimmick than anything. Uh, not like not like a gimmick gimmick, but if this is just kind of a thing. Like this is what he has for what he comes with like a, a sword weapon, but I don't remember where I put that. So sorry, I don't have that to show. But like these little blades, you can flip up, rotate around, and this will hook over the back here, and that just tucks the little arm blades away. And they just become a detail, which is really cool. I really like that as like an option for uh, for you know making this guy more intimidating, more effective in battle without any kind of actual weapon. It's cool. And again, I really love the sculpting on this guy, the detailing. There's actually something else that's pretty cool is uh, these translucent red bits. If you look closely, you can see there's actually molded detail underneath the red plastic in various places so that becomes more apparent when you know the light hits it and it just adds an extra layer of dimension to this guy's design it's very cool 
Now let's move on to that head sculpt. And it is a very nice head sculpt. It's got kind of a robot knight vibe, and I really like that. There's this, it, it kind of looks like there's this big jewel just kind of seated in the head that the helmet or crown or whatever is kind of built around, which is a really cool look. And I love that the color separation is so well done here with the white head, but then that red for like the top of the head, the size of the ears, the gem on the front, but then you've got the orangey yellow for the head crest, and then of course the silver with blue eyes for the face. It's a really cool sculpt and really nice color separation, color design, however you want to put it. Now for the articulation, it's another thing that's actually pretty surprising about this guy. The articulation is quite decent. The head is on a ball joint, so it can wiggle back and forth. It can't really go up and down though, which is unfortunate, but it can rotate. The shoulders, they can rotate. Uh, these are actually on sliders, so you can slide them out or compress them in. I kind of, I can't decide which mode I, or which orientation I like more because having the shoulder pads out like this gets them out of the way for the articulation and it kind of bulks out the silhouette a little bit, but you get this unsightly, you get this unsightly jointage showing in there. So you can push them in to clean it up. And I like the cleaner look, but I don't know. I just It's hard for me to decide. But in any case, when you want to rotate the arms, you can pull that out. And that allows full 360 degree rotation on very clicky ratchets. The shoulders can also go in and out. Uh, it's very, <laughs> it's very stiff. And go move it forward like this to show it. So it can go in and go out to not quite 90. It's uh, basically the bulk of the arm and the shoulders does get in the way, but still, it's oh, this it's a very stiff ratchet. <laughs> uh, you get bicep rotation that's weirdly detented. It well, not so much detented. What it is is there's uh, the way that this is shaped is hard to see but like this just kind of the, the bicep area is ever so slightly uh, oblong so it rotates just fine around here but when you get to about here it starts to crash into the inside of the shoulder a little bit inside of the shoulder pad so this kind of gets like flexes some stuff around which uh, you know, it doesn't really matter which orientation you have the shoulder in so that is how that goes. It still it rotates, which is fine. And the elbow, as you can see, does bend. Uh, you've got straight out, and then it bends to just under 90, which isn't super great, but you know it gets the job done. And the fists are actually, or the wrists rather, are on ball joints, so you get a little bit of kind of in and out wiggle, up and down motion, can rotate, and you can open up the fingers, which are good for holding the sword that I don't currently have out, but that's the, uh, the hand articulation. What might actually be a surprise is the, uh, the waist is on a ball joint, rather big ball joint, and this armor bit here can kind of move this piece here can kind of flip up and out of the way. And there's like a, there's a little piece back here on the back that doesn't quite move the same, but it doesn't really get in the way either too much. So yeah, that's, I don't know, that was surprising to me when I got this guy, how you've actually got not just waist rotation, but side to side tilt and slight forward and backward ab crunch. That's cool. And on a figure like this, that's that's cool. <laughs> uh, the front and back skirts and hip skirts can get out of the way to give access to the hips. The hips can go forward to almost 90, not quite, but almost. Can go back 
again, not quite 90, and go out to not quite 90, but still, like, the range that you get on this is pretty decent. You've got a ratcheted thigh stool that has a lot of detents. So that's actually pretty cool. And then the knees... Actually, let's get this up here. The knees are... Are they double? Yep, the knees are double jointed. So you've got single knee and then extra knee bend there. So really nice knee bend. Uh, this panel likes to pop out. It like pseudo clicks into place, but like it's also easy to pop it back in. It's it's just a decorative thing. It's not really super important, but that is a slight. There it goes again. That is a slight irritation when handling this guy. But then, the feet are on ball joints, so you actually get quite a decent amount of tilt, forward and backward motion, and rotation. So this guy is shockingly poseable uh, <laughs> for these kinds of figures. But it's... Uh, it, it's hard to explain. Like, basically, when we get to the alt mode, you'll probably get a better idea of why I'm so thrilled with this guy's articulation. But for now, let's just leave it at... It's pretty cool. He's also a pretty decent size. He's not, like, uh, Tobot big, per se. Well, actually, no, maybe he is Tobot big. We'll, we'll be looking at him next to a Tobot, so... <laughs> we'll know for sure in a minute, but... He's a pretty decent size. We bring in... A standard Voyager, which again, reminder, Artfire is out of the runnings for size comparisons now, which is why we're using Buzzworthy Dinobot. But here we've got our kind of typical size comparison, folks. And uh, Dinobot is, he's been kind of at a weird angle for past several videos. Oh, that's what happened. His heel got pushed down somehow. Okay. There we go. Now he's standing more straight. Anyway, uh, there he is with those fellows and lady. Uh, here he is with a standard deluxe. So you can see that this is a pretty sizable robot mode. And then what I was saying before about Tobot's size. Uh, here he is with my go-to contemporary Tobot. Tobot v. Wild Chief and... Yeah, uh, he is about Tobot height, so he is actually pretty tall. But of course, I know what you're all really here for, so here is Racing Flame with the duck tank. Now, before we get to the nitty gritty of why I really wanted to get this figure, and now I'm finally making a video on it after all this time, if you like this video or any of the other videos that I've done on the channel and you would like to do any kind of monetary support, which is not strictly speaking necessary, but would be much appreciated, I do have a coffee and a Patreon. Links to both will be at the end of this video as well as down in the description. Otherwise, you could always show support free for free uh, via, you know, like, share, comment, subscribe, that kind of thing. Typical YouTube stuff. Now, let us transform Racing Flame. And this is, this is really, okay. <laughs> The transformation isn't like, it, it's smart. I need to tighten that knee. <laughs> it's a smart transformation. It's cool what it does, but like what he turns into is just so perfect. Because like, we'll, we'll get into it. Uh, so first thing you want to do is straighten out these little toe spikes, which I thought was just a neat detail too in robot mode. And then one of these feet, you can see right back here on this foot there is this little tab you want to fold that down 180 degrees so that it's now sticking down then you rotate the feet so that the feet are now kind of tucked into the back of the shin like that these pieces if they're pulled out can go uh, in to the back of the cap you don't have to push them out to begin with but they're you know they're there now you want to fold the front and back skirts out of the way a little bit, get the legs straightened out, and then rotate the thighs so that they're 90 degrees uh, going outward on either side, and then bring the legs in, and the thighs will tab together right up here, 
and then the calves will tap together right back in here and the feet will tap together in here and you can probably tell where this is going now so now all of that is tap together and take the hip skirts and they're on double hinges so you want to hinge them down and they will actually sit inside of the knee pad there like so and now the back and front skirts come down and they'll actually peg into the thighs to lock all of that together so i'm pretty sure you can tell where this is going now but yeah this is so cool <laughs> so i want to straighten out the arms Make sure they're like completely straight. Uh, open up the little windows, little doors here, and flip the fists into the... Uh, I think you actually want to turn the fists, too. But you want to flip them into the forearm. Like so. Just turn and rotate in. And close that up. Then you rotate the bicep so that the arms are like this and then you want to uh, we'll pull this out for now and you want to push the arm in it actually collapses in maybe don't push that in but collapse the arm in why aren't you collapsing in collapse the arm in come on did I pull you out too far is that the problem come on there we go. Flaps the arm in. And then bring this in and tab it into the hip section. There's actually, there is a tab slot right there that, the, uh, that this tab on the forearm will go into. So let's get that straightened out and kind of angle this in it can be a little tricky to uh <laughs> to angle this especially once you've got one arm done but there we go get all of that situated and for the finishing touch and there we have uh dragon force racing flame in sword mode <laughs> turns into a sword and not a bad size one either this is like uh you know maybe uh definitely like bigger than a dagger smaller than like a sword proper but like it's a fun size like play sword and so yeah this is one of the reasons why i really really wanted to get this guy because a while back, like several years back, I, uh, I'll try to remember to make to link to the video as well. But uh, if I do, it'll pop up there and possibly down in the description. But a while back, I did a video on this Sentai figure for Zuban, which was a figure from, I think it was Bokenger, I think, that was a knight looking guy that turned into a sword. And that was very cool. But the problem with Zuban was he was fun to transform, but he wasn't exactly fun to play with because he didn't really do anything. And that's what makes Racing Flame so cool because it's basically like a even cooler looking Zuban that has a lot of articulation, like really decent contemporary articulation. And it's just very cool. Really, the only gripes I have with the sword mode is like there's a gap back here that uh, isn't super obvious but there is you can kind of see in this angle there's like a little bit of gappage really just right here for the sword and a little bit of gappage back here so it doesn't tuck in as cleanly as Zuban in sword mode but given all of the other like the fact that it actually has articulation <laughs> I think that makes it okay and that is just super cool. And the sword mode, I do think, actually works really well. I like how the hip skirts come down and fill in this section here. That's actually really cool. Adjust this light again. Uh, but yeah, that that's cool. Like you get this uh, 
like the way that the the deco works now that everything's reoriented it's cool how you've got this almost like outer trim of red with a little bit of red on the in, on the uh, inside too but it just works really well it's really cool it makes it look like a neat kind of future sword thing and also this is just fun because this is something you can do in uh, robot mode so <laughs> when he's in robot mode you can just give him like a telescoping neck which is silly but i love it and yeah this is just a fun figure to mess with the clickety joints are in some cases perhaps a little too strong but he's cool i like him a lot and the sword mode looks really neat and it is a pretty decently sized sword mode uh what's a good way to do this Hmm. Can we do it like this, maybe? Mayhaps. We'll just just fit into frame. Yes, yeah, so we'll do it like this. So bring in Dinobot and Boba Prime for our tall deluxe stand-in. Samus. So there he is with the standard size comparisons and you know I mean he's not he's roughly the same size in sword mode, same length I should say, as he was tall in robot mode. The main difference being the uh, neck is now telescoped out and the feet are now pointed down. So you get a couple inches of extra height or length, however you want to look at it. There is standard lux. So there we go. And for our Tobot comparison, here is Racing Flame with Wild Chief. And we'll just try and angle it more like this. So you can kind of get a feel for how that works out. And that is... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's cool. This is fun. It's like a, a role-play toy that is a really cool role-play toy that actually makes for a cool robot, too. And uh, also... For the most important size comparison of all, as always, Zuri is with the duck tank. Now this is where things get a little bit interesting, because I said there were two reasons why I wanted to get this figure. Reason one is Zuban with articulation, which was more than enough of a reason for me. But there's another reason, and this is going to be a little tricky to show, but we're going to do it anyway. You probably already tell where I'm going with this. As we are bringing in the big guy, I have to get my chair out of the way so I can do more with the tripod here. But we've got Earthrise Scorponok. Let's pull back a little bit. Try and angle this in a way that works out all right. Yeah, this is... <laughs> My apologies for the lighting here. I had it set up for a much smaller figure. <laughs> but the reason why, other reason why I wanted to get this was because, da 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 da, <laughs> Earthrise Scorponok can actually hold him. And it, it actually kind of proportionally size-wise that actually kind of works and looks pretty cool <laughs> so yeah that's uh <laughs> that's the secondary reason for me getting racing thing we move this light up here does that help does that help at all maybe a little bit yeah that i just think that's really cool I have kept Racing Flame in sword mode for a very long time because he's been a glorified Scorponok accessory, but he makes for a pretty darn cool Scorponok accessory. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't quite fit in the same aesthetic, but like he's a sword. I feel like that's okay. Yeah, but anyway, I have gone on long enough about all that. So yeah, this is reason number two. Not the primary reason, but reason number two why I wanted to get Racing Flame, and I think it was well worth it. Uh, so this has been a very cool thing that I'm glad I finally got to make a video on. If you want to get a Racing Flame for yourself, uh, my condolences. <laughs> I, I really have no idea where you can find one at this point. 
I got mine from the uh, defunct website that usually sells knockoffs that shall not be named because I have a personal issue with the site because of some really, really terrible uh, customer service, if you want to call it that, in a couple of instances in the past. But that site doesn't sell toys anymore, and even if they did, I wouldn't send, uh, I wouldn't send people their way. So yeah, sorry, I don't know where you can find it. I'd say maybe just look around, try and see if there are any reputable websites, like uh, you know, maybe eBay. Maybe G Market, but I don't really think this is on G Market. Uh, maybe AliExpress, but if you're going to check AliExpress, really pay attention to seller feedback um, because it works kind of like eBay and it's easy to get the wrong thing <laughs> from AliExpress. But if you want it, good luck finding it. Uh, I'd say just try and search for uh, Dragon Force Racing Flame and fingers crossed you can find it. I don't know. But it was worth the uh, 20 bucks? Yeah, <laughs> well worth the 20 bucks that I paid for it. Oh, also, I forgot to mention it, but the sword accessory that he comes with is a tiny version of himself, which is one of the reasons why I didn't have the sword, because like he turns into it, so why would I? But yeah, that's going to do it for Racing Flame. As I said, very cool. Hopefully, if you want it, you can find it. But that's enough about what I think. What do you all think of this figure? Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And I'll see you in whatever the next one is.